Happy to be joined by the Lights Out Championship 205 pound champion Cody Brundage, who's going to be fighting on Contender Series coming up here on September 1st, taking on William Knight. Cody, what's going on, man? How are you? What's up, brother? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. No problem. Good to be talking to you. We were joking off air. You know, it's been a long time coming, getting to chat with you. But uh, you were telling me off air, I didn't realize this. I know you were training. Uh, you have been training at Factory X. I didn't realize you actually moved out there with your wife. Uh, how has that transition been, uh, moving everything from Michigan? Yeah, so it was really crazy. You know, we came out here for a week to train because I had been out here previously when Bobby fought at UFC Denver. Um, and kind of, I got along with Mark and the guys over here. So we're like, well, let's go just check it out, get a week of training in and try to figure out if we can like do camps there was originally our plan. We went out there, got a good week of training um, and talked to coach. And he was basically like, you know, I want you out here full time if you're going to be here because my name's on your work, your name's on your jersey. So he wanted us to be here if he was going to really back what we were doing. So, yeah, me, her, uh, and then Colin Anglin also, we all kind of sat down and decided, you know, this is what was best at this point. Um, and it was tough, you know, because we're super close with our guys over at SFS and, and James and Parisian and all those guys over there. But it just felt like uh, it was a time to make a move. You know, I could get a full camp in there at elevation with guys like Dustin and Anthony Smith and, and uh, just some better competition uh, to really push me hard. Um, so, yeah, we, we found someone to rent our house in a week. We loaded up a budget van and got everything moved down here, found an apartment all within a week. So it was real quick. Uh, and then as soon as we got here, found out we were pregnant. And, yeah, it's been crazy. So we're kind of settled in now. But, yeah, that first few weeks there were rough. That's crazy. Yeah, so many things happening at once. Uh, we'll get into all that, by the way. But you did reference someone there, Josh Parisian. At the time, we're recording this. Uh, he got that big win on Contender Series. Long time coming, finally getting that UFC contract. I don't know anyone who's had a harder road to the UFC than he has with uh, you know going on Contender Series twice, doing the Ultimate Fighter. How happy were you just as a as a teammate uh, seeing him get the get the get the job done last night? Oh God, man, it was it was great. You know, he was in my wedding. He's one of my good friends, and like I had, like you said, there's not been a guy I've seen that's had a tougher route to get there. Um, yeah, I was overjoyed for that guy, man. I, he works hard. He's he's had opportunity. You know, I thought he should have got on season two. He got a spinning back fist knockout on three days' notice. I thought for sure he was in. Uh, it ended up not happening for him. He went on the tough house. Didn't really perform how he wanted. And then he got home and took a loss. And a lot of guys would have been done, I think, at that point. And he just kind of bit down and, and knew he was going to make it. And then, like I told him yesterday, you know, I texted him. I was like, you just wouldn't be denied. And he really did what he had to do to make it. And I'm super happy for him and James. You know, the whole gym over there, I'm just happy for those guys. Yeah, and I have a feeling we'll see that rematch in the UFC someday. Him and Brett Martin, that fight you were referencing, I think, uh, that you were mentioning there. It's, uh, yeah, I, hope I, th so. I, th I think it's only a matter of time. Michigan MMA really, uh, you know, putting, uh, you guys are definitely on the map these days, which is great. But uh, let's talk about you and Contender Series. When did you find out about this? Because I heard rumblings a while ago, and then I know COVID hit. Were you someone that found out, like, sort of before COVID, or was this something that happened recently, uh, getting this opportunity? Yeah, so my fight was, my last fight was in February, and I found out about this fight in early April, I want to say. I uh, originally supposed to be in July, uh, which for me, you know, that's a long layoff. You know, it doesn't seem that long, but I've fought, I've only been a pro since April. Um, so I fought five times between April and February. I like to stay active. So that was tough. You know, when they told me July, even I was like, wow, that's a long time. I don't know. Maybe I'll squeeze one in. And then COVID hit. So that wasn't really an option anyway. And we got pushed back to September. Um, so yeah, I mean, seven months between fights is not typical for me. Uh, I've got a lot better and, and it's been a blessing. You know, I've, I've got a lot of time to sharpen my skills and add new tools to the tool belt. But yeah, I I'm not a guy that does well sitting on the sideline. Uh, so I'm happy to get in there, you know? Yeah. And I uh, imagine the connection to factory X as far as you going out to Colorado, was that through your management? Cause I know Jason reps a lot of guys uh, from that gym. Well, uh, it, it ended up being through Jason, but uh, you know, originally when I went out there for Bobby's fight, I wasn't signed with a management company. She was just fighting in Denver, and that was the, you know, you either go there, Elevation, and we wanted to try that place out. And uh, I really, like I said, I hit it off with Mark kind of right from the start. And then, um, you know, then signing with Jason, figuring out, you know, they had a big connection there too, really kind of solidified that I wanted to be there full time. Um, but, yeah, I actually met him before I signed. So there was a little bit of connection there, yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Now, you mentioned being a dad. What, what, what's the excitement level right now? Because uh, you just got married recently, too. Like, it's it's all sort of coming together. I mean, you could be a UFC fighter coming up here pretty soon. Uh, what, what's going through your head, and, and how excited are you? I'm super excited. You know, definitely nervous. Uh, me and Bobby joke, we're like, we're going to have this child. And they're just like, you can, yeah, you can take it home with you from the hospital. It's like, we have no idea what we're doing or anything. But uh, 
you know, we've been reading a lot of books and, and watching a lot of YouTube videos, trying to figure it out. Everyone says that's not going to do anything. Uh, you'll figure it out as you go. But, yeah, I'm excited. I'm nervous. Uh, there's definitely a little bit more pressure. Um, you know, you want to be able to provide for your family and your children. Obviously, you know, I grew up and I never really had to want for much. My parents worked really hard so that I could pretty much do what I wanted. And I want to be able to give that same life to my children. So, um, you know, there's definitely added pressure, but added motivation as well. You know, it's definitely kick it into gear when you're not just worried about yourself or, or your wife. Like this life is hard. If it's just you, then you add your wife and you add a kid. It, it just gets harder and harder. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Definitely nervous, but more so excited, I think. Yeah, it's going to be great. And for people who don't know, uh, you say Bobby. That's uh, Amanda Bobby Brundage, formerly Amanda Bobby Cooper. If people know that name, UFC veteran, uh, you know, has fought everywhere, fought in Invicta. Um, she must be taking this pretty well just because, like, you know, you're she's a fighter as well. So she sort of understands what you're going through, not only with, you know, being a dad, but also just the fact that you're in fight camp and you have this big opportunity. Oh, yeah, she's great. You know, uh, she's super supportive. She knows what's going on. She kind of knows the deal. You know, I lean on her a lot because I don't know a lot that's going on. So I'm like, hey, what do you? What's this going to be like? What's this going to be like? She always got the answers for me. Uh, when we first started training together, we were just friends, and she would always say, like, you're going to be special, like, you're going to make it. You're just going to owe me two percent forever. And then we got married, so now I owe her a hundred percent. So it worked out pretty well for her. That that that's awesome. And when's the when's the due date? Do you guys know? Uh, late February. I think February twenty oh. fourth. Gotcha. I know late February. Good stuff. Has, has, the, has the mentality changed a little bit just with your career, knowing that, you know, now it's not just you and your wife, it's, you know, another another uh, little one, uh, you know, that you're going to have to support, uh, you know, going into this fight? Uh, definitely. You know, I want to, I want to, like I said, I want to give my kid everything. Uh, I was given pretty much everything by my parents. They worked their butts off so that I could be successful and, and have, you know, I never had to struggle or worry too much about where, uh, like my next meal, you know, I got friends that they don't know where the next meal was coming up growing up and I never had to face that adversity and I don't want my kid to ever have to worry about that either. Taking on William Knight, uh, people know that name. He was on Contender Series. He actually won his fight there. I think he's uh, won a couple since then, lost one fight in between. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Uh, I think we're super similar. I think he's very good. I think he's, uh, I mean, the guy's a freak. If you look at him, he's a specimen for sure. Uh, we're, he, he's kind of a grappler. Uh, I know he wrestled in high school. I wrestled in college, and he's got power. So we're kind of a similar fighter. Uh, we both like to come forward. We both like to kind of control our opponent, control center. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to really come down to just a battle of wills because it is such a similar style matchup. It's going to be who can impose their will on the other person. Uh, but I'm excited. Yeah, he took a loss. I, wa- I watched film on him, um, and that loss he took, was, I think, was a bad stoppage. You know, I'll give him credit. I don't think it – I'm not saying he would have won the fight, but it definitely shouldn't have been stopped when it was. Um, yeah, he's a beast. He's a good fighter. He's my – one of my toughest fights to date, uh, and I think I'm one of his toughest. So it should be a good matchup. I interviewed Anthony Smith last week, and, you know, we're talking about training camp and all that, and he gave you some major props, some major praise. Uh, it seems like you guys have not only gelled really well, but one of the things he mentioned in the interview is that you're just someone that's always wanting to learn. Uh, what's that been like getting to learn from someone like him who, you know, just last year fought John Jones for the light heavyweight title? Yeah, it's pretty surreal. You know, I, I grew up – I mean, grew up grew up in the sport watching Anthony Smith fight. You know, I'm not – I'm a younger guy, and so – you no, know, his first day at the gym, I'm like, damn, that's Anthony Smith. You know, I don't, I try not to get too starstruck, but you see him, you're like, that guy fought for the belt. That guy's at the highest level of our sport. Um, but he's just a good dude. You know, he, he immediately kind of took me under his wing and uh, kind of took that like big brother role a little bit. Um, just showing me the ropes and not just fighting, you know, like being a good person, how to interact with people, how to, you know, at that level, which, you know, being a young guy in the sport, like I said, I've only been a pro for a little over a year. You're not really exposed to that kind of stuff. If it's not, you know, if somebody doesn't take the time to do it, and he's really done that for me, he's poured a lot. I mean, he's in fight camp too, and he's given me so much of his time and energy, and you know, he's even going to corner me for my fight. I don't know, the guy's just a great dude. I, I was like, hey, what do you want? You know, what percentage do you want to corner me? He's like, hey, I just want you to get the contract. You know, and and I don't know, that means a lot to someone like me. I think if I ask you to be in my corner, that's a big deal. You know, we're kind of we're going to battle together, and and we put in the work, and and I try to push him hard. Um, you know, I definitely take my lumps for sure, but I try to be that partner that isn't just taking, taking, taking. I try to give him good looks and, and push him. And, and, you know, it's a dog fight when we go. Um, I'm that young, hungry kid, and I want him to have to respect what I'm doing. And he does, you know. And uh, like I said, I, I can't say enough about Anthony Smith and just how much time and effort and, 
just energy he's put into me while he's also preparing for a main event fight. You know, a lot of guys wouldn't do that. This sport isn't really a, I mean, it's a team sport, but you know, it's an individual sport. You worry about yourself and, and you get yours. And he's really, I mean, he's given me just as much energy as I think he's given himself for this fight, which has been great for me. Yeah. And how much of a benefit is it that his fight's only a few days before yours? Like you guys are kind of getting ready at the same time. You're at the same weight class. Like that must be, it's not like, you know, he's fighting in a couple months. Like you guys are kind of getting ready around the same time. Yeah, for sure. It's huge, you know, and then Zach Cummins is on that same car too. And he's been grinding with us as well. Um, so it kind of worked out, you know, that as soon as I moved out here, they got here like a week or so later and we've just been busting through this camp together and you know, I, they're going to go out there, smash their opponents and I'm just going to roll right off their momentum. So I'm excited for that. Do you cut much weight to get to 205? Not at all. I'm like 207. I'm naturally an 85er. I fought an 85 in my career a lot. I actually had the 85 belt at Lights Out too. Uh, so going forward, you know, if it's not a good matchup, but, you know, these 205ers like Anthony, they're like 6'4", got an 80 inch reach, 78 inch reach. Like I'm not fighting those guys. I'm six foot. Uh, I got a 73 inch reach or something. You know, I, I feel more at home at 85. The reason we took this fight was Williams a shorter guy as well. He's like 5'10", 5'9". It just made sense, the matchup. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, training with some of these 205ers like Dustin Jacoby, another tall, long striker, you know, it's just not the best matchup for me. And I could make 85 tomorrow if I had to. If the UFC called tomorrow and said, hey, we got to fight at 185, I could make it. So, you know, I, I try. I'm always in shape, so I don't think I could ever make 70. Uh, but 85 is where I, I'm going to make my home, I think. You mentioned your corner. Anthony Smith will be there. I'm sure Mark Montoya as well. Who's uh, Who else is going to be in there for you, or is it limited? I'm not sure what the corner situation yeah, we're, is like. So we're, all, we're limited to two, and this will be the first fight that my wife's not in my corner. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. Is she, is she going to come to Vegas, though, anyways, or I guess with the pregnancy, is she a little worried? Or uh, She's going to come to Vegas. She's going to fly out there, uh, I think, Friday when I do. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be weird. You know, it's going to be strange, just, just different, not having her backstage with me. You know, I'm a, typically I'm pretty nervous before my fights, you know, uh, and she's someone who can really calm me down and, and get me to focus in. So that'll be a different thing that I'll have to deal with. Um, like I said, I have that really good relationship with Mark and a really good relationship with Anthony. So I feel comfortable uh, with them to get me ready and have me feeling good going into the fight. But it will be weird not having my wife there. Uh, you know, we really feed off each other and, and I don't know, it's going to be odd. I know I, I can't imagine how she's going to feel, uh, you know, watching it on TV and, and not being able to yell or, or get me going so uh yeah it's gonna be odd i'm not, covid man crazy times i don't know it's gonna be different yeah no it's certainly that's an understatement for uh, for 2020 uh knockouts seem to be your thing especially the last couple of fights how's this one playing out on september 1st uh like i said i think it's a battle of wills uh i think it's gonna be a grind you know he's a grinder i'm a grinder i think it goes to late second early third but i think i finished by submission you know he's tough i think his one of his best qualities is he's durable and he's super composed you know, I've watched a lot of this film, and uh, guys are kind of beating him in the fight. And then, like his contender series fight, he was losing the fight, and then the guy gasses out and breaks because he's hit him with everything he can, and he can't stop him. Um, so, I mean, obviously at the bigger weights, knockouts are, are something that can happen at, you know, blink of an eye. So, But I just think I take him down. I think my jujitsu is where I'm much better than him. You know, I think we're both close on the feet, close in our wrestling, but jujitsu-wise – uh, I just think I have much better jujitsu than he does, so I think I get it done by submission. Late second. And uh, if you get that UFC contract, I mean, that's the goal here at Contender Series. What would that mean after just you know being in the sport for a couple of years to, to get that UFC contract? A guy like yourself who's you know not even 30 yet to, to achieve that milestone, what would that mean to you? Oh, man, it'd be crazy. I was talking to somebody today, uh, and I was just saying, like, when I was 16 years old, I was watching UFCs, and I was like, man, I'm going to be a fighter. And every, you know, the town I'm from, like, that's not a thing people do. Like people go to college, they get their degrees, they pursue that nine to five. And so I tell my friends that they're like, dude, you're not going to do that. Like, it's cool to say, but you're not going to do that. I'm like, no, I'm telling you guys, I'm going to do this. So I went wrestled in college and, you know, to, to not only be a professional fighter, but to make it into the UFC, you know, the NFL of our sport would just be, be crazy, man. It'd take a, a week or so to comprehend, I think, to even really for me to grasp how big that is especially like you said i'm only 26 years old i've only been really fighting for a little under three years like my ceiling is unlimited right now so to get in at this young age and and, and just keep getting better you know it, it would be huge it'd be great 
What does it mean to be a part of this sort of this new wave of Michigan MMA fighters? Like, you know, at the very beginning, if we're going a couple of years back, you know, it was Darren Cruikshank, and now it's, you know, Cody Stamen, and we're seeing Jamal Hill, and we just had Kenny Cross win last night along with Josh. Like, what does it mean to be a part of this new wave coming through? Because a lot of you guys are really making some noise. Yeah, it's super cool. And, you know, I think back in the day, uh, before I was even fighting or whatever, there was always those big rivalries in Michigan. But I think uh, the newer generation has kind of put those to bed, and we all kind of work together. We all root for each other, you know. Mondo was my barber, but he was also my boy when I was living there. And, like, Kenny and, um, you know, Brett, even, like, we all just kind of root for each other. We all want each other to make it, I think. I think there's, uh, you know, good vibes in Michigan. And uh, the guys all push each other. You know, Jose Johnson fights out of Texas, but I've trained with him in Michigan numerous times. He's on the same car with me. I've been talking to him a lot. And, uh, yeah, it's cool, man. I think it's cool for Michigan to get on the map. I think, uh, like, Matt Frendo having that big Lights Out promotion, that's going to be a huge feeder in the years to come. And, uh, I think they're just doing the right things. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Matt. I mean, the, the work he's done with, with the fighters and just like everything in general, just getting Michigan on the map, it, it doesn't go unnoticed. So uh, it's really cool to see that he's been able to, to be a part of this as well, just with his shows and lights out, like I said, giving you a platform to everyone. So that's uh, really awesome. Now, you didn't think we'd uh, finish this interview without talking about the hair. What inspired that uh, dyeing your hair blonde? Well, dude, we were going to fight in July. I was like, oh, I'll have it for three months and then I'll go back black. It won't be a big deal. I was kind of bored in quarantine. Um, and then my fight got pushed back to September. So now I've been sitting here with six months having blonde hair. I figured out having a, I'm having a child. I'm like, dude, you can't be 26 having a kid with bleach blonde hair. What are you doing? So after my fight, I'll be going back to black. But I figured I had it this long. I just ride it out to my fight. Makes sense. And downtime, what's that looking like? I know Amanda likes the game a little bit. Uh, what do you guys do uh, for downtime? Uh, a lot of Diablo. Uh, she's got back on the wow. I don't have a lot of time. I'm literally putting in like 40 hours a week just training. You know, this is my first fight camp. I've got to train full time. So I'm trying to do take full advantage of that. Um, I play PUBG a lot. Uh, but yeah, I mean, games, you know, we started watching Arrow. Colin told us to watch Arrow. So we started watching Arrow. We like that. Uh, yeah, we're big nerds, really. No, it's good. I'm the same way. Look, I, I'm a dad, but I, I, whenever I get that little bit of free time, it's video games. I was playing N64 last night, so that's uh, I'm, I'm a bit more old school. You're gonna so. go. I know you're old school. You going with that new Xbox or a new PlayStation? Well, I just bought a Switch. Like that's how far behind I am with like the technology. So like, I it's baby steps. I'm sure I'll get there eventually, but I'm just getting used to the Switch. I got Mario on there, so I was playing that. So. We'll, uh, we'll see. Baby steps, as they say. Uh, Cody, so happy to see you get this opportunity. Really looking forward to the fight. Uh, it's coming up here September 1st. Is Dana White's Contender Series. Anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media you want to plug? The floor is yours. Uh, yeah, I'm Landau Sports Performance. You know, I've been doing my strength and conditioning over there. Um, they got me right in the elevation. You know, That's not easy, so they got me right right away. And then, uh, yeah, all my teammates at Factory X, you know, especially Anthony and Mark and, and Dustin Jacoby, those guys have been really pushing me hard. Uh, and then my wife. I always got to thank my wife because – you know, this life's not easy and she's a huge supporter. She's pregnant now. So double kudos to her. Uh, but yeah, she's great. But that really, that's it. You know, obviously shout out to SFS and, and James and those guys, you know, they've been pushing me really hard. You know, I spent my whole career there. So all my foundation was there and, and I appreciate those guys as well.